Hello, I'm Jenny. I'm 36 years old. And I'm about to go through a healing journey for 30 days. And I've decided I'm going to focus on healing by re identifying myself, by re establishing my identity, and focusing on the spiritual side of me. I have a gift maybe a curse I'm not really sure but it's something that a lot of people don't understand and maybe don't believe in and I I have to start at the beginning of my life so I'm gonna go ahead and start from the beginning from the time I was a young girl and each day focus on a different story a different experience, a different journey. Um, sometimes I call the gift a curse because it's very hard to live with because it isn't something that I can control or make happen. It just happens when I least expect it. It happens when I'm not, you know, even prepared for it to happen. And then, you know, eventually I've learned over the years that sometimes... When it happens, I recognize it and I have to do something about it. And it's just hard because it's life and death. Those things which I cannot control, I cannot interfere, I cannot stop, I cannot change. But there's purposes in all of them. And there's this this place, this phase. Um, I, I call it the crossing over where the people are leaving the earth, leaving the world, leaving their bodies and they're moving on and crossing over and there's like a place between here and heaven that they are, from my experience, that they can connect with us and they can um, communicate things that need to be communicated and I don't know if it's their spirits or if it's God's way of communicating to me and it's just God. Sometimes I just think it's God and how he communicates to me and how he speaks to me to prepare me for things. But so many times it's surrounded around death. But sometimes it's not, but mostly it is. And sometimes it's before someone dies. Mostly. Sometimes it's well. Sometimes it's simultaneously. So I'm going to start from the beginning. When I was just a little girl, and the first person I'm going to talk about is my god brother. His name was Tony Pindolas. I was probably nine years old. And I was laying in bed. And I was staring at my blue wall. Kicking my foot out of the sheet. Rubbing it against the cold wall. I liked to do that. I always liked to put one foot on the cold wall. And wrap my body taco in my blankets. And I was staring at the wall, and this particular night, I don't remember what time of night it was, I think it was late or early morning, like maybe, I don't know, two, three o'clock in the morning. And um, all of a sudden, I just started having this overwhelming abundance of visions of, of, of Tony Pandolas. He was my god brother, he was my mother's husband, my ex stepfather's godson. And I was just overwhelmed with visions and floods of memories of him. And I was just laying there with my foot on the wall staring. In, and then I just started seeing him. I, I had visions of seeing him. I saw him playing hockey, ice hockey. And that was, that was a memory we had that I had with him. We used to play ice hockey. It was one of his favorite things to do. And he was standing on the ice skating up and down with his stick just free and happy and then I had visions of him in the baseball card shop where we did a lot of card trading baseball card trading was really popular back then and um, he was sitting there and he had the cards and he laid them all out in his book and then it flashed back to him being on the ice skating again and it was just it was just so intense. I started to cry. And there was this immense sadness. And I couldn't understand why. 
I was crying and why I felt so sad. And then it became a fear and it became a need to see him. It became a fear. I don't know why, but I ran. I woke up in the morning. I ran to my mom and I told my mom, Mom, we need to see Tony Pandolas right now. And she said, Oh my God, I can't believe you don't even remember him. We haven't seen him for years. I can't believe you remember him. We need to see him, Mom. We need to see him right now. We need to call him. Make sure he's okay. And she goes, well, I'll talk to your stepfather when he gets home. And we'll talk and we'll see if we have some have enough money in the account. And maybe we could take a vacation. And then the next day, that night, I was still pressed. I was pressed with his spirit. It wasn't leaving me alone. And I was still crying and it was pushing me and it was gnawing at my heart. And I went to my mom the next day and I said, Mom, Mom, did you did you talk to him? Did you talk to him? Can we go see Tony Pandolas? Did you call him? She says, I talked to him. He said, well, he'll check the money in the account and he'll see if we have enough to go on vacation. This was the second day. Now the third day came. I ran to my mom again. I said, Mom, Mom, we need to go see Tony Pandolas. We need to go see him right now, Mom. And she goes, I talked to him. He gave his mom a call. He called his mom, okay? He gave him a call to check on him. He left a voicemail to her, and he's waiting for her to call back. The next day, I ran in my mom's room, always at night, right when he came home from work. I said, did you talk to him? Did you hear back? And my stepdad was standing there, and my mother was standing there and she goes, well, there's a, there's a message on the answering machine. Let's go see. And he walks over and he presses play. And there's a voicemail. And it's Tony Pandolas' mom. And she speaks the words I know they didn't expect me to hear. That she said, oh my God. I'm so glad you called. I'm so glad you called. I tried to get a hold of you. I really did. I tried. I wanted to reach out to you, but I lost your number in the move, and I couldn't find your number, and I didn't know how to reach you, but Tony died three days ago, and his funeral was Friday, and I wanted you to be there, but I didn't know how to reach you. And at that moment, every hair on my arm stood up. I felt the coldness come through my body. And I, I just felt this immense sadness, thinking Tony was trying to communicate with me. Maybe if they had listened to me the first day, he would have called her and he would have been able to be at that funeral. He wanted him to be at that funeral with his mom. That was the purpose. She needed her best friend and she didn't know how to reach him. And he hadn't called her for years. It had been a couple years. And if it hadn't been for those visions, and it hadn't been for me listening to them, and it hadn't been for me knowing something was wrong, I would have never ran to my mother, and I would have never kept pressing her, and he would have never made that call. He wouldn't have been there for his best friend. And I think that's, that was the purpose. It wasn't to stop his death. It was an accidental suicide. It was an accidental death. He had a gun and he was playing with it. And his mom started to come up the stairs and he panicked and he ran to the closet and he tried to shove it up in the closet and hide it real quick. And he turned and looked as he's shoving the gun up in the closet as his mother opens the door and the trigger got snagged on a hanger and it shot him in the head and she watched it happen and she was devastated, absolutely devastated. It was so traumatizing to her. She needed a friend and that is the gift that I was able to give. And some people don't believe in it. Some people say it's not real, it's coincidence, or, you know, there's no such thing as 
uh, afterlife. Some people say that there is none, but all of my experiences and the totality of my life add up to that. This one thing that I know is true. Heaven is very real. And it does exist. And people do go there when they die. And if you ever doubt or question where your loved ones are, do not. They are there. And if they're not in heaven, they're still standing with us. They're still with us. They're still here in this in-between phase. They have the choice when to leave. And they have the choice how long to linger. I know this. This is my first experience. My first story. Tony Pendolas. When I was probably nine years old. Day one of my healing journey. And reforming my identity. I love everyone. And I hope that I can help someone in this journey.